so it can kind of mound on a spoon. Not quite, but almost mounds on a spoon. Hello, howdy, and welcome back to the kitchen. I'm Catherine, and I'm the Arrow Garden Homesteader. Today, I'm cleaning out my freezer. I have lots and lots and lots of tomatoes I have been saving for this day. So I am going to make some tomato paste. Uh, I did it once before. It was kind of a mess, but I got tomato paste out of it. So I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do the oven method. I started following the directions in the ball canning book, which does, which has you do it on the stove. But I did a few in the oven, and it was just so much easier. So this year we're going to do. It's going to be kind of the long game, but I'm going to put these in roasting pans. I'm going to put them on cookie sheets, and I'm going to throw everything in the oven, and I'm going to cook it. I think I'm doing 350. I'm going to have to double check that temperature, but I'm pretty sure it was around 350. You don't want to roast it, so it's not 425. You want to cook it, so it's 350. And it's going to take hours. So the first part is to just get all of these in these tins. Now, what I did with most of these is I cut them in half, I took the seeds out, and I also took the core out when I did that. So I cored it, seeded it, put them in the bags, and froze them. So I've taken a lot of the extra juicy bits out and some of these tomatoes, I don't know if you can see this yellow one here, it's actually a, um, it's just a regular slicing tomato. I just threw that in here too because it was ripe and we didn't have a good use for it. I've got bits of tomato that, you know, when you cut a tomato and you've got the ends, oh, I threw those in too. So it's lots of bits and pieces. I have almost 20 pounds of tomatoes here. The recipe calls for 14, but I can scale it up to 20 and it's it's not a problem. You don't just get extra jars. So they're going in the pans, which uh, might actually go over flowing, but we'll see. Um, I'll probably come back every once in a while and um, scoop out some of the juice, just because it is going to get really juicy at first. And if I can scoop some of that extra juice out, then I mean it's just going to take less time in the oven in the grand scheme of things. So. So literally all I'm doing right now is putting these in roasting pans. I don't have a good roasting pan. My roasting pan, the uh, non-stick coating started to peel off and now I can't use it. So I'm going to put these in roasting pans because they're deep enough to contain a lot of the liquid. So it means I don't have to like sit there and watch it like I would on a cookie sheet. But uh, yeah, just going to throw them in the oven. I will let you know approximately how long it takes at each step. So I'll probably check it at like three hours and then I'll evaluate from there. So I will load them up. So I'm not sure how well this will show up, but this is what the tomatoes are looking like after about two and a quarter hours. They are really juicy. Those are the lower ones. So the upper ones, they're actually getting a little bit of char on it, which I think is okay because it's mostly the skins, but they are really, really juicy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the juice out and put it in a pot. And uh, I might save it, I might not. I, it depends on how watery it is. Mostly that'll just be watery. And so I will... I'll probably just chuck it, honestly. So that's, that's where I am right now. I'm going to take the water out off camera because I don't think I could juggle all that at once and not make a big mess or burn myself. So... I think I already made a big mess in my oven. Oh well. Okay, well I'll tell you, I got real tired of uh, siphoning it off and then trying to pull all these skins off by hand. So uh, I'm going to drain some of the excess juice through the strainer. And then I'm probably just going to press it through the strainer after I've gotten all the juice out and uh, use that as the as the pulp. And I think I stuck to my cookie sheet. There we go. Alright. So you can hear all the water pouring through. So I'm going to take that water. I don't know if I can show you, but it's all it's all just clear water. And I'm going to add that to the other stuff that I actually managed to um, scoop out with the ladle. And then 
once the pot is empty underneath, I'll just press it through and hopefully leave all the skins and seeds in the top. If it's successful, I'll bring you back for that. If it's not, then you'll see none of this. Okay, so here's where I am. Everything is in the strainer now. All of the tomatoes from both batches that I put in the oven. In the mega huge pot over here, I've got five and a half quarts of liquid that came off. I'll show you. Try moving the camera this way. So there you go. Five and a half quarts. It's fairly clear. I might pass it through the strainer again just to get some of the solids out that I can keep in the tomato paste, but I'm not sure it's worth the effort. I might can this up though, because I can use this for like when you make tacos or you know other sauces that if they become too thick then you can thin it with tomato juice. It's not really tomato juice, but it's tomato juice. So the pot underneath, I just drained it. It's got a little bit of juice that's been dripping through, but I have a wooden spoon and I'm going to try see if I can mash this down and press it through. So whether it works or not, you will see because that's only fair. So what I would like to be left with is skins and seeds. Now if the occasional seed gets through, that's probably fine. I will um, probably pass the immersion blender through it if I see more than a few. But I guess we'll see. Um, I will probably uh, speed through this because this is going to get very boring very fast. I'm already bored with it. But it's just a matter of pushing it through. Let's see what we got so far. There's a little bit coming through, so it's just going to be. So this is hopefully slightly better than using tongs like I was and trying to see, like pull the skins off. And then I'm not even sure if I'm getting all the flesh. See that actually has a little bit of flesh on it. So I'm not even sure if I got all the flesh off. But this is where this is where I stopped. I just I was done. So. I'm going to try this. This is probably slightly messier, but you know what? It would have been messy anyways, let's be honest. I don't have a food mill or... I don't know what else I would use. I don't have a food mill. I'm not going to use the juicer because we've already been over why I don't really like the juicer. I should probably just give it away. This is going to have a lot of skins in it. Oops, I think I just lost a skin in there. Well, maybe not. So a lot of the pulp is sticking to the side of the uh, strainer, the underside. So I will have to probably go through every once in a while and uh, knock it off into the pot. I want to make sure the skins stay in the top. So it does take a lot of tomatoes to make a small amount of tomato paste. And this is probably going to kill my arm. I might just pause this here and I'm probably going to take a bunch of breaks while I do this. So I'm about halfway through the process of pressing this through the strainer, which probably is what a food mill does anyways, uh, except I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. Uh, I switched over to a rubber spatula just because I felt I was getting better, uh, I don't know, coverage, pressing abilities. So I just press a small amount up against the side of the strainer, try to flip it over a few times, and then I move it out of the strainer and keep going. So it's taken a lot of elbow grease to get to this point. I think that I will just uh, try to invest in a food mill. It has also taken a lot more seasonally appropriate candy than I care to admit, and lots of elbow grease. So here, let me show you. So once I've pressed it through, it accumulates here on the bottom, and then just clean off this just like that and put it in. And I try to make sure it goes in the pot. Nothing worse than losing all that hard work. So, I will keep at it. I'm pretty sure I've got another half hour to go on this, maybe, depending on how my elbow grease holds up. I made it through all of the tomatoes and the skins and all that. This is what's left. I am just under a quart and a half of pulp. 
it is a little thin so I consider that to be a little too thin for tomato paste I did put the burner on low I'm going to try to simmer this down my other option would be to mess up another pan put it in the oven and gently sort of uh, cook it off that way but I might try the stove top first and as long as it doesn't boil it should hopefully be okay if it starts doing the bloop 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 that that will make a really big mess all over the place. So I'm gonna see I'm gonna see where this takes me. And then this is the state of my strainer. It is just jam packed full of tomato pulp. I don't think there's any way I can actually save this part of the pulp. But what I might do is um, dip it in the juice because I can always save the juice. If I save the juice, I've I've used that before in the past, so I might I might give that a go, canning up some of that. Um, it's just really thin juice, but like I said, I've got what is that? About five, just over five quarts. Not quite five and a half, but but you can see. You know, I don't know. Can you see it? There's a little bit of juice pooling here, so it does tell me that it's a little too runny to be canned up as tomato paste right now. So I'm just going to let that try to cook down a little bit more. And then, just so you can see the state of my kitchen. So that's the strainer. That's how much juice I have. It's pretty clear. There's a little bit of pulp in the bottom. Uh, I might try to see if I can do anything with it. This is what's left of all of the skins and the seeds and things. Everything, everything is messy. My hands are sticky, the pot is sticky, the everything is sticky. So, <laughs> if you saw my cowboy candy video, the candied jalapenos, that was a very sticky mess too. But um, this, I might try running it through the strainer again just to see. It is still a little wet, just to see if I can get a little bit more out. Um, if not, I'm not too concerned about it. Um, this can actually be... Um, you can dehydrate it and turn it into tomato powder and freeze dry it. Again, tomato powder. So I, I will be keeping that. I'll be processing that, uh, drying it down and using that as a tomato powder. So, so that's where that is. So almost two hours later and lots of constant stirring over medium heat, I'm finally there. And my suggestion would be mess up another dish and do it in the oven. That is my note to myself for next time. So, it does still have a little bit of water in it, but when I draw across, see how it slowly oozes together? But the, the area is not filling in immediately with moisture. So I was getting that earlier, that when I was cutting it, it would just sort of like collapse back in on itself and just like fill up with moisture. So I've got most of the moisture out now, and I think this is where it needs to be, so it can kind of mound on a spoon not quite, but almost mounds on a spoon. So at this point, I'm going to put you back on the tripod. I need to put in one teaspoon of citric acid, mix that in really well, and then basically just get it in the jars. It's a 40 minute process, no, pardon me. It's a 45 minute processing time for half pints, jelly jars. I'm actually using the four ounce jars, but it's the same processing time. The reason why I thought it was 40 is because I'm actually doing the tomato juice at the same time. I reduced that down. I'm going to be doing it in quart jars, and it's 40 minutes for tomato juice with some citric acid in it, half a teaspoon per quart. So I'm going to be just processing everything all together for the 45 minutes, and it just kind of makes it a little easier. Yeah, so see, there is still a little bit of juice in there, so I think I might have been able to go a little bit longer, but, you know, at some point it's... It's thick enough, you know? I mean, I, I don't need it store-bought thick, because I, I do find that, like, when it's store-bought thick, I only use, like, a quarter of a can. Then I have to put the rest in the freezer, and yeah, so so this might actually work out really well. Okay, let me get you on the tripod, and let's get some stuff going. Flip you around. Okay. So let's pull out some quarter... I think it's a quarter pint. Okay, before we go any further, let's put the citric acid in because this is really important. Okay, so this is a half teaspoon measure. This is just because I'm going to need a half teaspoon per quart jar. 
for the juice. So I thought it would just be easier to mess up one teaspoon instead of two. Okay. Get this all mixed in well. Okay. So instead of using a ladle, I am just going to spoon it in and level it off. Now I believe it's a half inch headspace because we're water bath canning, but I am going to leave slightly more because I am again using reusable lids. Actually, might be a little too much. Okay. Get another one out first. Kind of have them stacked in there a little weirdly. I did not wipe the rim on that one. I hope it's clean. Okay, well, yes, obviously I'll just speed through this. You don't need to see all of this. I'll bring you back when I do the tomato juice. So, of course, my battery ran out at the worst possible time. I put on a couple minutes of charge just so I can get this going. So, this is the tomato juice. I ended up straining it because, as you can see, there was a lot of just seeds and a little extra pulp in there. So, I got that out. I did put in my half teaspoon of the citric acid. That just mixes in really easily. Just give the lid a quick wipe. And then, on this goes, it's really hard to be one-handed. There we go. I will get that in the water bath canner, and like I said earlier, this will process for 45 minutes. The tomato paste is done, as is the two things of tomato juice I managed to put up. So I did reduce the amount of liquid, because it was like five quarts, I think. I'm not canning five quarts. So I reduced it down, so now I've got two. So that's, that's nice. I did have six jars seal and three not seal. Now, if it had just been one, I probably would have left it, but for three, I might just go ahead and reprocess them just so that I don't have to use up three of these in the short term. I could freeze them, but I don't have freezer space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, they only have the band on right now, so I know which is which, but I'm going to a clean band, because this one's a little scuzzy, clean lid, clean ring, I'm going to clean the rim of the jar as well, and it's going to go in, now this is, it's room temperature, but cold food, cold jar, cold water in the canner, and I'm going to just slowly bring everything up to temperature and reprocess it. So since they're really short jars, I don't have to put a ton of water in my canner, so that's really nice. But that's how it goes. It might be that because I was using new lids um, that I hadn't uh, warmed up in the water bath, I was kind of in a hurry. That might have been why, because I didn't soften the rubber gasket. So that could have been why. Could just be user error, because hey, that sometimes happens too. Could just be I had a little, you know, I didn't wipe the rim as well as I could have. So, could be anything. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it so other people can find it. It'll be really helpful for me. It'll be really helpful for other people who are looking for how to do stuff like this. And if you want to see what I posted last time, check out the, that video here. And I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.